So one of the things that I thought was fascinating about Mizano was uh, the KTM's chain issue. KTM broke three chains during the race weekend, which is weird. MotoGP bikes do not break chains. You never see that happen. And so the question was, well, what's going on? How, like, is KTM falling apart on a mechanics level? Like, how are they somehow not able to figure out how to keep a chain on a bike? So the other part, problem with Mizano is they run it backward. It's not in the direction it was designed for, so they run it backwards. So a lot of these corners are crazy fast entrance speeds, and there's a lot of braking throughout the corner. So there's a series of right-hand corners on the track that the first one that they enter is the fastest one, and it gets progressively tighter and tighter. Now, if you can imagine if you ran that in the correct direction, if you ran it through a left, that would be one of the most fun series of corners to watch because they would progressively go faster and faster all the way through. Well, they have to go in so hard on these corners on such a high grip track that all the riders complain about how physical Mizano is because the bike's bucking and it's fighting and there's so much grip and so much force. Okay, that's the track surface. Now think about all these bikes. They are constantly adjusting and de designing these bikes to find more grip when the bike is leaned over. For example, if you go look at, you know, spy photos, photos that people grab when the manufacturers didn't want them to of GP bikes, you'll see how thin the spars are from the engine hangers, how thin the frame is, how thin the swing arm is. All this stuff is designed to let the whole thing flex more and find more grip and more traction. Well, the problem is now you've got a flexi chassis that finds lots of grip on a surface that's got way too much grip. So what the teams do is they'll run the swing arm back as long as they can to try to have less grip actually on the rear to help the bike turn and not just hook up everywhere. But now you made the swing arm even longer so it's more bow, it can bend more, more. That you're getting this issue where the forces that are going into the bike are flexing it so much that the chain line is getting so misaligned that the chain can pop off. And that's what I think happened to KTM is their chassis and everything's getting so misaligned that it's popping off the chain on the rear sprocket and then breaking a chain link, which is a weird problem to have that they're breaking chains because of that. I actually have more insight into this because you are absolutely correct. What I read, another article they're doing, every other manufacturer put a little chain guide mm -hmm. on the bottom of the rear sprocket to help maintain chain alignment and as that flex happened to guide the chain back onto the sprocket. Mm -hmm. Can you guess which manufacturer chose not to run that? I think mean, I can guess what we want. Right. So again, it was a pretty unique thing. It is surprising to me that everybody else was doing it. Why did KTM choose not to or just not think about it or not notice it? The other thing I thought with KTM is interesting. They're the only brand who runs a steel frame, not an aluminum. Brand. Right, right. They're still doing their, yeah. Which they should be able to still tune it and get flex out of it. But I wondered if... The, some of the restrictions with the frame meant that they had to get more tuning, more flex out of their carbon swing arm than the other brands. So maybe their swing arm is actually more flexy than the, everybody else's, which gives them more of this misaligned issue. Then the, the last factor of this whole thing, which compounds all of it, is they all now, with these rear ride height devices, drop the rear end so much that these chains have to have a ton of slack in them. Because if you think about Think about like the chain slack on a dirt bike because the swing arm travels so far, the chain has to be really slack on it. So there's all these guides and stuff to keep the chain in place. They almost have that same issue on a GP bike now because these swing arms and everything's so long and so much flex. So it's kind of a fascinating, weird problem to get. Uh, and it's a little embarrassing that KTM, who comes from dirt bikes, didn't think about it.